Let's talk reading plans for August. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie and this is Katie's Book Nug. I feel like I never introduced my channel like that, but you clicked on it, you know the name of the channel. Anyways, today I'm here to talk about my August TBR. I didn't set a TBR in July, I just kind of went based off vibes, but I'm excited to talk about my reading plan. TBRs are really fun for me to make, I just enjoy talking about all the books that I'm interested in and the things that are catching my eye, and they are meant to be a guide, not a rule book, so if I don't stick to it in the end, it's fine. No pressure, so it's like a hopefuls, you know? So. With that being said, I do have a special announcement at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, let's get into what I'm feeling for August. So to get started, I do have two physical arcs that I was given that come out in August, and so I want to read them because I, like, if I get a physical arc, it makes me more inclined to want to read and review the book. So the first of that being Bring Me Your Midnight by Rachel Griffin. I read her book Nature of Witches when it came out honestly just on a whim. The publisher had sent me a copy and I was like oh I don't know about this I'll read it and I loved it. It was such like a gentle beautifully written book and this is Rachel Griffin's first fantasy book with a, its own fantasy world as opposed to being set in the real world. The cover is stunning. The physical copy, which I did pre-order, has like a very beautiful hard case design as well. And it's just giving all of the like summer witchy vibes. Her books also always kind of incorporate some element of like the climate in it as well, which I just think is also so cool. So Tana's life has kind of been predetermined for her ever since she was born. She is going to marry the governor's son and form an alliance between the witches of her island and the mainland witches that kind of don't really understand what goes on on the island. Tana's coven has kind of appeased their fears by releasing their magic into the ocean every full moon. But Tana misses one of the midnight rituals, which ends up being a fatal mistake. And there is no one that she can turn to for help until she meets Wolf. Wolf comes from a coven that claims to use dark magic, and he is keen to show Tana all that she can do with her power and doesn't want her to release it into the sea. And he teaches her the forbidden magic. As the sea grows more violent, her coven loses control of the currents and it could be deadly for everyone. And Tana will have to choose between love and duty. Like, it's just perfect summer reading vibes because it's witchy, but it also has to do with the ocean and some like climate elements tied in there. And I just know Rachel Griffin's prose is beautiful and I'm so excited for this one. I also, when I got the arc, like, look at this, I think it's a sticker. Or it's just a little print. But that's so pretty. And then I also got this little card. So cute. The next arc I have is Zara by SJ Jones. I mean, this book just sounds so cool. Look at how beautiful the cover is. I also think this book is um, the August BNN like monthly book club pick, which is super cool. And it is described as Sailor Moon meets Cinder. That is all you have to say to get me to pick up this book. I've been meaning to pick it up and I, I do want to read it soon because it just sounds so cool. So in the morning realms, magic is forbidden. And magicians are basically blamed for this plague of monsters that are hunting everyone down. Jin Zara already has enough to worry about. She's a cruel stepmother. She has to look after her blind sister. But she also possesses magic. And she has to try to keep this magic under control. One day she meets an easily flustered young man named Han and he tells her all about the magical liberation movement. And they are called the Guardians of the Dawn. A mysterious plague is corrupting these magicians and turning them into monsters and Zara has to learn to use her magic in order to save them. Oh my god, and the tagline, magic flickers, love flames, chaos reigns sign me up. I am there. I am here. I want to be reading this book. Which is why it's on my TBR. So you can see that there's a theme of me really picking out YA fantasy books that I want to read because I barely read any, any YA fantasy this whole year and when I realized that it made me really sad. So I'm trying to build a TBR around YA fantasy. Like that is what my shelves mostly consist of. I know this is a genre that I love 
and I am just I'm just here to read all of these lovely books. With that being said, the next is House of Roots and Ruin by Erin A. Craig. Erin A. Craig writes like gothic horror and oh, gothic horror, fantasy, romance. That kind of subgenre is my favorite thing ever. So I have to take off this sticker. This is always so nerve wracking taking off the sticker. You know what? You know what? I was in the store and I saw Gooby Gone and I was like, I don't think there's anything that I need that for, but I feel like I need it. I need it for the stickers on my books. Why didn't I pick it up? I, well, next time I go to the grocery store, I'll get it, but now it's all sticky. Okay, so this is the sequel to House of Salt and Sorrows. This was one of my favorite books of 2021. I do actually want to pick up the, like, smaller edition because I don't like, I don't like that they don't match. So I will probably be picking up this hardcover soon and transferring over my tabs. This book, House of Salt and Sorrow, is a retelling of the Twelve Dancing Princesses and it takes place in this kingdom by the sea and it was a gothic horror fantasy, like so beautiful. Honestly, it was probably the first book to kind of introduce me to that niche subgenre. Like I didn't think there was going to be as many like horror elements as there was and I loved it. I was blown away. So the fact that we are returning to this world and now I have this b &N exclusive with these sprayed edges. I'm so excited. So in the sequel, we are following some of Annalie's younger sisters. Basically, all of the other sisters have left their house by the sea and gone on to live their own lives, but we still have Verity and Camille living there. So Verity receives word that the Duchess of Bloem, who is a celebrated botanist wife, wants her to paint a portrait of her son. Verity is so excited. She really wants to take this opportunity, but her older sister Camille refuses to let her do it. And in that, she's kind of forced to reveal the secret that she's kept from Verity for years, in that Verity actually sees ghosts. But she just doesn't even know that she's seeing these ghosts. Verity is appalled and she flees to the Bloem Manor. And at first, she's charmed by the beautiful, lush landscape and greenery at this manor, and she finds herself drawn to their son and something may bloom between them. But it's not long before Verity is plagued by dark nightmares and a twisted sinner society of Bloem begins to seep through the sickly sweet facade. That is everything I want in a book. I'm so excited. I'm just like, I feel like Erin A. Craig does like just this horror YA fantasy subgenre so well. I also have small favors by her. That I haven't read could potentially also add that on this list too you know just like kind of pick up books that make you want to read other books and just add them to the list I don't know but that's not officially going on the TBR I'm excited what is summertime if not a time for reading books about pirates and I realized I have not read any pirate books this summer and I need to fix that and I also love Adeline Grace and I haven't read her original duology or her debut duology yet, so I need to fix all of those problems. And to do so, I am putting all the stars and teeth on my TBR. I also have the sequel, All the Tides of Fate. I ideally, sometimes I like to read like duologies and stuff like that, I like to read them together, but for the sake of <laughs> making my TBR manageable, I'm just gonna put the first one on my official TBR list. Aw, and this book is from Aspen for my birthday, probably a few years ago. That's so cute. Aspen is just like the sweetest little human being. Anyways, Princess Amora has been training her whole life to be the high animancer who is the master of souls and she must prove her skills in a ceremony. If she doesn't, then she will not earn her spot on the throne. Her demonstration goes awry and she is forced to flee. She then meets up with a captain named Bastion and they make a deal. He will help her prove she is fit to rule if she helps him reclaim his soul of magic and they set off on an adventure. They have a whole crew, as you can see in the back, it says Princess, Pirate, Stowaway, Mermaid, the crew makes the queen. I really loved Adeline Grace's writing in Belladonna. I just thought the prose was so beautiful and I'm excited to read her pirate adventure because I always love to find new auto-buy authors, you know? And look at these like little chapter headings. 
both of these books seem like they're just so much fun and like I said I got to read one of my new favorite authors backlist and thankfully the backlist is not that long so I also am kind of reading this in preparation for Foxglove which comes out at the end of the month so that would probably be on my September TBR just because it's like near the end of the month when it comes out you know but very excited love Adeline Grace I am ready to be her number one supporter so I need to read all of her books so I can fulfill that role okay and then like last physical TBR fantasy YA adult book that I have I kind of usually categorize my TBR so anyways so the last book I have on that portion of the TBR is Miss Born by Brandon Sanderson and I thought that the first book had a different title Maybe they like renamed it since everyone just called it Miss Born anyways. This is a new edition and it's a big floppy paperback and it has an actual beautiful cover. I actually read this book. I have these editions and I read like the first 200 pages or so and then I fell into a really big reading slump. So I was really enjoying what I was reading but it just wasn't the right time for the book. But I have been wanting to get into Brandon Sanderson's like Cosmere for the longest time so I'm finally going to commit to doing that. I'm just putting the first book in the series on my August TBR but I plan on vlogging my experience of reading the entire trilogy. So with that I'm probably going to spend the beginning of the month reading through a lot of these like standalones that I have on my TBR and then buckle down and read the trilogy and I'm just so excited. This is a story of like what if the dark one won the war and like you had to live under the evil person's rule so the dark one basically has been ruling the land for like a thousand years and we have these people that can ingest different metals and it gives them different powers and that is what it is follow vin and she's basically a street urchin and she kind of has to learn to master this power to become a strong misborn and fight in the rebellion against this lord ruler that has been evilly ruling the land for many years. Now I don't actually know how far off the mark that description is, but I'm just very excited that the series has new covers that I enjoy owning because the original US covers, I didn't like them that much, but I love these. So I bought the whole box set. Um, Taz influenced me at Barnes and Noble. And so I, I did purchase the box set. And I'm just, I'm just excited to be joining the Brandon Sanderson party because I feel like I, I have been missing out. I've only ever read his YA sci-fi series, but I need, I need to know. I love gigantic fantasy worlds. I love interconnecting series. Like I am ready for the Cosmere and I will be slowly making my way through the books. And this one in August. So my audiobook TBR, I have been finally in an audiobook mood again. I'm going to leave it pretty loose because I've been making my way through a few different things and it really can just depend on what's going on with my holds. But I will say the one audiobook goal I want to make this month is reading Killjoy by Holly Jackson. This is the prequel novella to the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series, which I read in audio earlier this year and I loved it. It's about Pip and it's before all the events of the series take place. She's like at a murder mystery investigation type party with her friends. I think it's gonna be really fun. It's a really short audiobook. I can probably get it done in like a day or two and I am just excited to be back with Pip and all the characters that I love. I do think, should I maybe put another thriller on my audiobook TBR? I'm, I'm going to say this, I'm not going to put officially anything on my audiobook TBR, but let me talk about what I have sitting in Libby. So I also have Five Survived by Holly Jackson, which I'm pretty sure is about a friend group that goes on like this van trip and they start dying. I have It's Not Summer Without You, which is the second book in Summer I Turn Pretty series, which I didn't like love the first book, but I'm just like reading them so I can like watch the show because you know how that goes. Um, I could potentially also start Finley Donovan is Killing It, Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid, and I also am on the last book of the Vampire Academy series, Last Sacrifice. I'm 66% of the way through. It's due in one day. I really want to finish it quickly because there is someone in line after me and I don't want to like stop the book and then have to restart it in like two weeks. That is very annoying to me. So I actually should probably spend some time reading it later today. 
Um, but after that, I wanted to read her Bloodline series, which is a six book series that follows Sydney, who is an alchemist, and they kind of like have to keep the peace between like the humans and the vampires. And I am ready to just read Rochelle Mead backlist essentially at this point because Vampire Academy was so fun and I'm so glad I picked up the series this year. Just this fulfilling, like, I wish I read the series in high school because I know I would have been obsessed with it. That, that is, those are pretty much my options. I also have How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. I could pick up like a thriller thriller. I have a few Riley Sager books sitting in there, but I'm not going to put anything on my TBR because if I start the Bloodline series and that's like six books, then that's probably going to be what consumes my audiobook listening for the next couple months or so. So we'll see. I just kind of audiobooks they come and they go through my holds i used to use scrib but now i really try to only use libby so i'm not like paying for anything extra because i find libby has most of what i need i just kind of gotta you know as things come in listen to them so that is my philosophy <laughs> and now for the exciting part of this video not that the rest of it wasn't exciting but the announcement part is that me and tori from tori between pages are going to be hosting a 48 hour read along and it's a romantic themed 48 hour readathon and it's taking place from august 25th to august 27th i'm going to put up a little infographic here from the romantic -thon instagram i'm so excited we're going to be doing reading sprints we're going to be talking about all of our different books as we read them and so i'm kind of going to set forth a few options for myself actually in this video i'm just going to say like two of the books that i could potentially read and then obviously there will be more content around that event but these are the two books going in that i do think that i want to read at least <laughs> the first book that i want to read for this readathon is bewitched by laura thalassa i actually got sent this book by the publisher and can we take a look at this print? Thank you. So I actually read Rhapsodic by Laura Thalassa a while ago and this is her new series about witches and we have Selene and she is trying to be accepted into this coven and to do so you kind of have to go on a quest but then Nefarious forces try to drag her plane from the sky which sounds terrifying and Selene's magic awakens to save her life but in doing so it devours her memories and she then stumbles upon an ancient evil, Memon the Cursed, who mistakes Selene for his long dead wife. The wife who betrayed him, so he's not very happy to see her. Selene manages to escape him, but he then follows her back into the real world, and Selene becomes entangled in a dangerous plot. I mean, he thinks that she is his dead wife, he is a demon, and she is a witch, and tagline in the back says I knew you would come my queen I'm there the other book that the other book that I want to read for our 48 hour romanticiathon is to bleed a crystal bloom by Sarah a Parker I've had this one on my list for a while but it's just been calling to me lately but I'm like yeah I need to read this and I'm gonna read it it's a Rapunzel retelling Rapunzel doesn't get enough retellings so our main character pretty much was saved from the massacre and just lives a very confined life in a castle. And she's kind of like, seems like from the description, a little bit in love with her captor, which is obviously not healthy. It says in the description that it's a toxic love, but, but soon the ugly truth will be revealed. It sounds really unique and like a lot of angst and I want to read it and I think it, this readathon will be the perfect occasion to do so. So those are the two books. I don't want to set myself up for like too many books for a 48 hour readathon but I definitely think that I could probably sneak a few more in there but I'll think about that as the time gets closer to that weekend in particular so please please check it out follow the Instagram and join us for our 48 hour romantic adventure August 25th to 27th all right guys that is it for my August TBR I'm feeling super invigorated about my reading picks this month after kind of having a few months of like I don't know just like not like super connecting with the books that like so enjoying all the books that I've been reading but I just feel like I really haven't been targeting my reads to my actual favorite genres so I'm just very excited to be actually picking up the books on my shelves because that's what I've been telling myself to do all year long and I'm excited about it because these are the books of my heart so let me know if you've read any of these books down below or which book seems the most intriguing to you leave a little ocean emoji for Bring Me Your Midnight since it was the first book I talked about in this video and it's very oceany. And love you guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe because that 
supports my channel don't forget to check out tori and have some fun read some books and i'll catch you guys in the next one